The sun, giver of light and life, shines most powerfully at the equator. Here, it powers an extraordinarily rich zone of life. Brilliant and bizarre species from three continents, three oceans. More than a line on a map, Equator is a powerful force of nature. Much of the equator traverses deep, empty ocean. But in the shallow seas of Indonesia, the tropical sun beats down on the world's greatest area of coral reefs. Coral reefs, created by the sun, overflow with extraordinary life. These reefs of riches are home to over 2,000 fish species. On a single dive, 283 different kinds of fish were counted here. This is a new world record. Even within fish families, there can be huge variety of shape, color, and occupations. The Ras family boasts 185 members, ranging from imposing giants to delicate cleaners. The whole reef community is so spectacular that it's attracting scientific attention. And of all the groups, most interest centers on corals. The sheer variety of corals is dazzling and confusing. And understanding this diversity could change our understanding of evolution. Why does this marine wonderland exist here, among the islands of Indonesia? The answer is that a unique set of forces converge here. The equatorial sun powers a network of ocean currents flowing through the thousands of islands spread out between Asia and Australia. The main through current is equivalent to the flow of a hundred Amazon rivers. But currents flow in all directions, and where they intersect at the western tip of New Guinea are found the richest reefs in the world at a place called Raja Ampat. The forest-covered limestone outcrops are largely untouched, Currents from many directions flow in deep channels and wash the reefs that fringe these islands. The currents are constantly bringing new arrivals to settle on these already crowded reefs. This hawksbill turtle has traveled thousands of kilometers on tropical currents to get here. Most fish have come just as far. From the coasts of Africa, the Americas, and Japan, all shuffled together, all adding to the richness of life. The canyons and overhangs are vital shelter for schools of juvenile fish. Some were spawned here. Others drifted in on currents. Hiding away, they can feed and grow safe from predators. But the coral itself is also key to Raja Ampat's riches. There are over 400 different corals here. The best known 
are the branching types called staghorn or acropora. Based on shape, there are 350 acroporas, but by genetic analysis, there are only 170. So, how many are there? And more importantly, what exactly is a species? Corals are helping answer these puzzling questions. Coral reefs can be huge, vast, yet they are created by tiny creatures called polyps. Colonies of polyps build the reefs by secreting limestone. Polyps are animals. They use stinging tentacles to snare food from the current and draw it into their mouths. Staghorns, brain corals and plate corals are the major reef builders. But their impressive growth does not just come from a diet of plankton. They also soak up nutrients from fish. Any fish waste is recycled. But even being an ardent recycler is not enough to explain corals' tremendous growth. Their secret is solar power. The sun gives corals the extra energy to build massive reefs. So how do they do it? They do it by forging a powerful partnership with plants. Hundreds of millions of years ago, corals and plants came together to harness sunlight thereby creating a major biological alliance. And that alliance is renewed when free-swimming algae colonize the polyps' bodies. Once swallowed, the coral's gut somehow recognizes these little aliens. And instead of digesting them, it wraps the algae in membranes and absorbs them. They're then moved towards the polyp's skin, where there's light. It's a partnership. The polyp provides nitrogen to the packaged algae, now called zooxanthellae. And they harness sunlight to make sugars, which helps their host to build reefs. But in the past, algae have also helped corals to survive. Different algae work better in different light and temperature conditions. And when conditions change, corals will exchange algae. Changing algae has helped reefs survive coral bleaching, sea level variation, and climatic upheaval over millions of years. These tiny partners have created huge limestone ramparts around the equator as altars to the sun. Corals strive for maximum surface area to capture maximum sunlight. The result is remarkable limestone sculptures. But they pay a price for worshipping the sun. They risk being choked by other sun lovers. A fine fuzz of seaweed grows vigorously over the reef surface. It's only constant grazing by reef fish that prevent corals from being smothered. They return the favor by providing shelter and protection. Staghorns offer the greatest protection. But get too close, you risk being stung by polyps. But the risk is worth it. Fish can venture out of their coral.